us on the day on which we remember a great American, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It was a federal holiday today in his honor, which means um, my kids were finally able to get a day home from school. Boy, it's great to have that again. There haven't been enough days off this year. For those of you who don't have young children, or maybe your kids are grown up and you've forgotten what it's like, because you do forget, here's what it's like. On Saturday night, our son Billy, as he usually does, ventured into our rooms after midnight to recruit one of us to leave our bed and go sleep in his. He won't just get in with us. We have to go sleep with him. <laughs> so my wife goes to his room, and 45 minutes later, she comes back very annoyed. I don't know what's going on, but she's had enough. He won't go to sleep. He's crying. He's making noise. So now he comes in again, crying and making noise, and corrals me to go sleep with him in his... Uh, now, his bed's a bunk bed. He's in a twin bed <laughs> on the bottom. Our daughter's in the bunk on the top. I get in with him on the bottom, and I don't fit, but I just need him to be quiet so we can sleep. But he won't sleep. First, he needs uh, water. I get him water. Then he, he can't find this plastic star that glows in the dark. We find that. Then he has to go to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom. He comes back. He's whining. He's crying. Our daughter is yelling, be quiet. Stop talking. I can't sleep. It's terrible. <laughs> so then an hour in, finally, we get everyone to sleep. I'm crunched up in this single bed with a four-year-old. But I'm out cold now. I am sleeping until about 3 o'clock in the morning. I hear my daughter now say, Dad, Dad. And I'm like, what? She goes, I can't find my sunglasses. <laughs> 3 a.m., she needs her sunglasses. <laughs> so anyway, that's what it's like to have young kids. It's a never-ending series of questions and demands with occasional breaks for sunglasses at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then on Saturday uh, morning, I woke up to a tsunami warm warning, which was one of my fears, you know? You know at the end of a fireworks show where they shoot everything off at once? I feel like that's what the planet's doing to us right now. Omicron, tsunami, snowstorm, it's all happening at once. And I'll tell you something, after this is all said and done, the only thing that's gonna be left is that Baby Shark song. You know that <laughs> song? Uh, that is now the most watched YouTube video of all time. It's the first video ever to get 10 billion views. It's a good reminder that COVID is still only the second worst thing to go viral. <laughs> Thank God my kids are too old for the Baby Shark. My kids are now on to uh, That's Just My Baby Doggy. Do you know that's that one? That's just my baby doggy. Yeah. That's just my baby doggy. That's just my baby doggy. That's just my baby doggy. That's just my baby yeah. doggy. That's just my baby doggy. My children play that over and over again. Do you, do you know? That's just my baby doggy. 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 And that's it. It just goes on like that, which... I hate it, but I also kind of like it, which I guess is the key to stuff like this, but I do hate it very much. And um, your son doesn't listen to that? No, he doesn't. Oh, he's gonna. Oh, I, It's coming. I, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Get the vaccine for it right now, because it's happening. All right, I have The will. song, apparently, it wasn't a song. It was just a t this TikTok video. That's just my baby dog. That's just my baby dog. That's just my baby dog. And then somebody made it into a song, which I have to say, I hope the baby shark eats the baby doggy because we can't have all these baby animals running around torturing us all the time. The artist formerly known as Kanye has a new song, uh, Ye, which is what he goes by now. It's his name now, Ye, which is a cheer, not a name. But Ye released a... <laughs> snippet of his new single, during which he appears to be making a threat against his ex Kim's new boyfriend. Rich ass kids, this ain't your mama house. Climb on your brother's shoulders, get that top ramen out. God sent me from that crash, just so I could beat Pete Davidson's ass. Oh, that's not, I know. You know what reminds me? Reminds me of when Tupac wrote the diss track about Andy Samberg. Do you remember that? <laughs> Can you imagine you're minding your own business, you're at home, Suddenly, Kanye attacks you? I mean, he has done that to me, but can you imagine? <laughs> Pete Davidson, though. Ariana Grande wrote a song about him. Now, Kanye's got a song. Pete is one Taylor Swift away from the heartbreak trifecta right now. <laughs> Speaking of angry people in a spin, Donald Trump's back on the road. He was in Florence, Arizona this weekend for his first rally in quite a while. He ran it for an hour and 35 minutes. Maybe it's me, but the material doesn't. It's not just not working. It's kind of like watching the Second City reboot. It needs more Samantha or something. I don't know, but 
thousands of people showed up because there's nothing to do in Florence, Arizona. <laughs> and there's a, at these Trump rallies, there's a long list of items you're not allowed to bring. And this is the list. Here it is. You see alcohol, explosives, et cetera. That makes sense. But look at this. No appliances, i.e. toasters. <laughs> I was bringing a toaster to it. Well, when I go see Trump, I like to have English muffins. I don't know. It was quite a crowd. Before the show, a reporter from the Right Side Broadcasting Network, which is not broadcasting or a network, chatted up some of the attendees, including a gentleman who has an interesting theory about California Governor Gavin Newsom. Well. And Newsom's a clone, okay? They just took him out. He yeah, had, he's he a puppet for the left. Had, well, he's, he's, well, he's a different level, you're right. Yeah, he's but but uh, the real N Governor Newsom has had his military tribunal in Gitmo, and he's been executed, yeah. okay? Well, there you go. Thank, thank you for your time. <laughs> I like that last word. There you go. Well, eh, you know what? I'm not going to touch you. And then um, Fatty LaBelle himself took the stage to scream about being cheated out of the election and to lash out at all the networks who refuse to go along with that. They continue to refuse to talk about it. They say, while it is unsubstantiated and the big lie, uh, the big lie, the big lie is a lot of bull <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what it is. It is <laughs> a lot of, yeah. I mean, he's... <laughs> Somehow, uh, he went from big lead to big lie. And uh, not only did Trump play the hits, he rolled out new stuff, too, including a COVID conspiracy theory that is outlandish even by Donald Trump standards. The left is now rationing life-saving therapeutics based on race, discriminating against and denigrating, just denigrating white people to determine who lives and who dies. If you're white, you don't get the vaccine, or if you're white, you don't get therapeutics. It's unbelievable to think this. Yeah, it really is. It's super unbelievable to think that. <laughs> but go on. In fact, in New York State, if you're white, you have to go to the back of the line to get medical help. Think of it. If you're white, you go right to the back of the line. <laughs> right. Well, I know that happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where does he even get this stuff? This is a man who hasn't waited in a line since, like, hot lunch in the fourth grade. <laughs> White people are being sent to the back of the line? I guess Martin Luther King's dream has been realized at last. But <laughs> Donald Trump isn't the only politician spreading nonsense when it comes to COVID-19. It's happening at the local level, too. This is from a meeting of the Wisconsin State Legislature. And I would like you to meet Representative Treg Pronchinski, whose name isn't even the most confusing thing about him. Mm -hmm. So you ask, what are we going to do to stop the spread of the pandemic? And, you know, if you can't, if you can't see the virus, if you can't see anything, how are you going to do it? How can you stop it? How? You physically cannot see the virus. You don't know if it's in this room or it's outside or if it even exists right now in here. You have no clue. How are you going to stop that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, maybe the same way God stopped the hair from growing on your head? I don't know. <laughs> Let's have a look at that, that head of his again. That's, it's like he told his barber, make me look like a Bulgarian pornographer. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Biden is planning to do his part to stop the spread by sending free masks to everyone who wants one. Doesn't every store everywhere already have free masks for anyone who wants one? And why so late? We've had COVID for almost two years. Now we're getting the mask. And where are these masks? When are they going to show up? It, once COVID is gone? It's a dilemma, but President Biden isn't content to just sit back while we all wait. He has a plan to cover us in the meantime. Hey there, Kimo Sabi. It's me, your old pal Joe. Boy, this Omicron macaroni's really packing a wallop, huh? Don't you worry. We're going to be sending you some of those little nose napkins. We're shipping high quality masks to every American. The good ones with all the different layers, like a Nacho Supremo. Where will you get them? Hell, I have no idea. So until then, we're introducing a new COVID safety program I'm calling Hold Your Breath. It's simple, Jack. While you're waiting for your mask, just breathe in deep and keep it in for as long as you can. Those little COVID buggers can't fly up your nostrils if you're doing that. So take a big old breath and don't let it out until you see your mailman in a week or a month or a year. Who freaking knows, man? <laughs> I'm Bill Barton and I'm Thank you. Thank 
you, Mr. President. It would seem you have everything under control. The world has become very unpredictable, and I, the best way to be ready for the future is to study the past. So with that said, it's time to look back at how far we've come during this pandemic. It's time for a new and possibly final edition of This Week in COVID History. This Week in COVID History. It's time to check in with everyone's favorite host of The Apprentice. All right, I just got my vaccine, and I will recommend it to anyone and everyone. Come with me if you want to live. Hmm, let me think about that. Newsflash. America's military is on the march for the inauguration of strapping young buck Joseph Robinette Biden, featuring a cavalcade of Hollywood royalty, Lady Gaga, Jennifer from the block, and the pride of Idaho, the Red Hot Mamas. Is it getting hot in here? No, says chili communist Bernie Sanders. My tuckus is frozen to this chair. While former Vice President Mike Pence's good deeds were finally rewarded. And that's a rapture on Mike. But something's amiss. The outgoing president did not attend today's inauguration. President Trump was absent. President Trump did not attend inauguration. Trump is nowhere to be seen. No Donald Trump. Where is he? He may be gone, but he'll always be with us. I will be watching, I will be listening, and I will tell you that the future of this country has never been better. I wish the new administration yeah. great luck and great success. Yeah. I think they'll have great success. Yeah. You're fired! <laughs> and while the future of the virus is uncertain, America can at long last be the sigh of relief with a new steadfast leader. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Hello. Oof, good luck. This has been This Week in COVID History. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Uh-oh-oh. Oh, oh.